Welcome to Chillin' with Ice with me, Lori Fetrick, or most of you know me as Ice from the American Gladiators. Thank you for joining me on this podcast where we're going to dive in and go behind the scenes on the number one hit iconic show of the 90s. It's time to get up close and personal on what drove us to be gladiators, what challenges we faced, and how we overcame to reach all of our goals. I know in this first season, inquiring minds want to know, was there drama, fights, hookups? Are we all still friends? What did we do in our personal lives and how are we staying in such good shape years later? Well, stay right here and let's get into Chillin' with Ice. Before we dive into our incredible episode today, I want to let you know that this is a self-funded podcast and I would love your support. For the cost of a cup of coffee a month, you can donate to my Patreon page and that would make all the difference in the world. For the small donation, you will get back so much in rewards, like you can watch all of my podcasts on video. I will have exclusive content like behind the scenes footage, a private Facebook group where you can interact with me directly and other VIP fans, a monthly Q&A, direct shout outs and follows from me to you on your social media and so much more. Find me on Patreon at Chillin' With Ice or click the link in the show notes now. Okay, let's dive in. Today's guest I'm really excited about. It's not too often I get somebody in my own backyard to come into the studio today. Um, this gentleman is from Wisconsin. He, in high school, he actually played football, baseball, wrestling. He's been on numerous magazine covers, also did a little television here and there. So he did Married with Children's, Knots Landing. I'm sure some other ones we'll talk about. He was Mr. America in 1990, and he just finished doing the Masters Nationals, and we'll talk about that. I am super excited to introduce Steve Henneberry, better known as Tower from the American Gladiators. Hey, Lori. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. This oh, is so you. awesome. Well, the other thing I wanted to mention that I forgot to say is you're one of the number one real estate agents here in Los Angeles. Oh, not one of the number one, but I'm, I'm doing The well. number one? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm doing well. He's like, no, I'm the number one. <laughs> we're, we're doing well. Yeah, we're doing well. That's really cool. Let's talk about that first. First of all, you know, wait a minute. I'm going to talk about something because as I was going through and I said, I heard wrestling. You're a big guy to be wrestling in high school. How was that? I mean, well, I wasn't always as big in high school, Lori. I mean, I my, actually my freshman year, I wrestled 115 pounds. No way. Yeah. So How I'm tall are you? Six four. But I wasn't. I was only six foot. But I was 115 pounds. I mean, I was that big around. And I mean, I could stand behind a telephone pole and you couldn't see me. So how, let me ask you that for a second, because my girlfriend's son, he's, he's, how tall is he now? I think he's like, I don't know, five, seven, five, eight, thin. When did you start putting on weight? How long did it take you to start putting on weight when you were that thin, that tall? Well, I always consider myself as a, being a late bloomer as far as physically. I mean, I mean, boys tend, you know, tend, uh, they usually mature a little bit slower than women. A lot. Uh, <laughs> kidding <laughs> no but i was a late bloomer and okay. uh, so i started i didn't start putting weight on until my junior senior year and oh, my okay. senior year i graduated about 185 so i went from 115 as a freshman being 185 as a senior and then i just fell in love with weightlifting and bodybuilding you know my you know my senior year of high school and uh, okay so that's when you started actually lifting weights was in your senior year of high school well it was, it was in, in 19 in 1979 is when um okay. i i um bought up my first muscle fitness magazine and gary leonard was on the cover of that magazine i can remember it like it was yesterday and i looked at that magazine and i said god what would it be like to be mr america really uh -huh. and i says i'm giving myself 10 years to do this now, I didn't share this, Lori, with a lot of people because they had looked at me and go, like, yeah, right. You know, but it's, it's stuck right here with me the whole entire time. So, I mean, growing up, you know, growing up in a small town in Wisconsin, we didn't have facilities. We didn't have personal trainers. We didn't have the Internet. We didn't have I learned everything in the magazines or encyclopedia encyclopedia i remember those days <laughs> i remember flipping through the magazines and reading how to train biceps yeah. and chest and yeah. back and stuff you know so that's kind of how i started my bodybuilding career setting that goal first and just kind of it living and breathing it every day i mean i remember breaking dates you know not you know wanting to go out with my buddies because you know and if i told them why they'd go that's, that's 10 years enough from now what, what does it matter right you know but i just knew in my heart that i needed to continue stay true to my goal yeah Exactly. You know, and, uh, and then, you know, as I won like the Mr. Wisconsin and onto some local stuff, I knew I needed to be in California. Yeah. 
So where'd you get your discipline from at such an early age? I mean, was that like a family thing? Was it just you or what? Well, I think the work ethics came from, of, of course, my mom and dad, you know, growing up on a, on a farm, learning how to work real hard, you know, every oh, day. And, and I think my own personal discipline is that I hated to fail. You know, I was never that, I was never that star athlete in high school. Mm. I was always just okay. Mm-hmm. Right. So I wanted to do something that on my own without being, it's not that I'm not a team player, but I want to do something on my own and that I can say, I did that. No, I get that because I was always part of a team. Right. All, everything that I played in high school were team and I wanted to be like the individual to see if I could shine. Right. So I thought about going into tennis, but it never took <laughs> off. But anyway. <laughs> It's never too late. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Um, but yeah, so I mean, so then I knew I needed to be in California. I remember coming out here, um, you know, to visit California and, and go to the famous Gold's Gym. Mm. You know, and I had just won um, a, a contest back, so I was in pretty decent shape. I was six four, probably two fifty, two sixty back wow. then. And um, and I remember going to Gold's Gym and um, Ed Connors, who's one of the third owners of the Gold's Gym, uh, saw me working out there, and he come up to me, and I mean I knew exactly who he was from the magazines. Yeah. I mean it's not that I knew him from you know from the internet or uh, Instagram or anything like that. And he says, "Hi, I'm Ed Connors." And he goes, uh, "You're not from here, are you?" And I says, "No, I'm not." He goes, "You look really good." He goes, "I'd like to take you to lunch," and I'm thinking to myself, "I don't know you." And yeah. I said, "You know, I'm I, I'm busy." I said, he goes, well, can you come Play back? hard to get. <laughs> oh, he says, can you come back tomorrow? He goes, um, you know, I really would like to get to know you. So we were staying at Santa Clarita with some family, and, and I remember going back there and thinking, I need to go see this guy. Nice, nice. And I remember making a trip from Santa Clarita back into the Venice right. and you know, meeting with, sitting down with Ed. And I'll never forget this, Lori. I mean, after we were done with our lunch, he says, go back. He goes, he goes if you want to take some gold, remember, Gold's Gym gear was the hot stuff. Everybody wanted it. Yeah. The biggest one actually was Gold's Gym in Honolulu, Hawaii. Yeah. Like apparently that store made more money than any store around the United States yeah. and around the Yeah. So yeah. everybody wanted Gold's Gym. So I remember him telling me, saying, Go ahead, Steve. Go pick. Go pick a few things out. You know, back there. So I'm like, I'm just trying to be real respectful. Yeah. I took a T-shirt. I remember taking a hat and a, a pair of shorts. <laughs> and he says, "Oh no." He goes, "Whatever you want." I looked at him. You're like, I remember, oh hell yeah! I walked out there with two bagfuls. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and, and awesome. he never blinked an eye, and but I thought I scored. Yeah. And so he then said, he goes, "What is it going to take to get you out here in California?" I said, "Well, I'm in Wisconsin. I have commitments there, and because I, I had just bought a gym, a gym back there." You know? Yeah, that's what I heard too. And uh, so I had a commitment to this gym and my members, and and I remember going back there and telling everyone, you know, showing up with all this gold gym, and everyone's like, "Oh, you lucky sucker!" You know, yeah. I can't believe it. And we're all sitting around the front counter of the gym, and the FedEx. Now this is in the late, uh, middle '80s, early '80s. A FedEx is like like it's big business. It's something it's really like important. Santa coming. It's like really important. <laughs> Whatever's coming, it was FedEx in the '80s. Yeah. I'm thinking, he shows up and he hands me a FedEx envelope, and it was a check for five thousand dollars. Wow. And five thousand dollars in was a lot in, back 80, then, in eighty three yeah. or eighty four was a lot. Oh, absolutely. And I remember calling my mom. I said, Mom, I said, I just got a check from Ed Connor. She goes, Don't cash it. She goes, He'll own you then. <laughs> oh my God. Parents, <laughs> know, right? I Parents know. are so afraid of everything. And it was just a little notice in here. Thought this might help get you out here a little faster. So what was the, what was the incentive of him getting you out here? For what was the reason? You well, think? Ed, I know how well you know Ed and his story. Ed's discovered a lot, a lot of bodybuilders oh, gotcha. over the years. So he wanted that discovery. Yeah, okay. I mean, he's like Brian Helwig, the ultimate warrior. He's responsible right. for just name. Of, there's just a ton of bodybuilders. Um, um, anyway, so I remember coming out and, I, and he says, "I got a job for you." He goes, "Sell your gym. Now we're open. You can invest that money into a Gold's Gym in San Diego." Nice. We're opening one right now, and I could be a, an owner in that, and I would have a job. And right. so I. Just You're mentioned, like score. Yeah. And so I mentioned it to, you know, some of my, my members and stuff like that. And one of my members says, well, I'll buy this gym from you. Wow. <laughs> so it was meant to be. Everything started happening and yeah. falling into place and everything. I didn't look for it. So when you started bodybuilding, I mean, did you start at like small local levels before you hit Mr. America? Yes. Obviously? Okay. So you went small locals, kind of like what I did is I went city. Uh, I went city, then um, state, and then nationals. Now I was trying to go pro. Did you ever want to go pro? I mean, did it? 
I did. Okay. I mean, my goal was uh, I wanted to, I wanted American and I wanted to win the universe. Got it. Okay. And then I just and then I became a weeder guy, mm-hmm. and you know, and I just didn't like what was Joe always when you showed up for Joe, you had to. I mean, his first thing was Hannaberry. Let me see them abs, and you always had to be in shape. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as you know, You're like, Lord. oh my God, screw this shit. I just want to <laughs> eat a McDonald's cheeseburger. <laughs> I mean, I like to think that I try to stay in, you know, in pretty decent shape all year, but I'm, I never blow out to the point where yeah. a lot of people do. But I just didn't know if I wanted to be at that level all the time. I've seen guys like that, and it looks hard. Yeah, it, it's tough. And uh, so um, I just put bodybuilding kind of on the back burner. And quite frankly, I was on a photo shoot for, for Muscle Fitness. Mm-hmm. And um, the photographer, um, uh, Robert Reef, he, he says, hey, you're in great shape right now. You should go try for this new show. Now, before we get into gladiators like that and everything, I mean, with, with your diet back then and you training and everything like that, was it? as hard for you as like okay for me i was eating boiled fish three times four (laughs) times a day broccoli remember okay so remember back then we didn't have the education that we have now right and i always say i wish i would have known back then what i know now like you know about all the good fats and you know yeah you can eat this because it's going to release the fats you know but it was like so hardcore that it's just it was i mean when you were dieting back then, I mean, what has changed now? I mean, what do you know now that you wish you knew back then, like dieting and all that kind of stuff? Well, I know now that, that I didn't have to eat as much tuna fish. There you go. <laughs> See? <laughs> I mean, to this day, I, I don't think I can even eat a can of tuna fish anymore um, because it's all we had was, you know, egg whites, tuna fish, and chicken breast. Yeah. Pretty much, you know, and uh, ground turkey was just kind of coming out in, mm-hmm. the t- in the day and people said it was still too much fat. Yep. And- and didn't know about avocados were healthy fats, you know, or That's olive oils. That's what I'm saying, yeah. You know, so what I know today is that, you know, what I try to do now is that I try to eat into my contest, grow into my contest, mm-hmm. instead of lose for the contest, if that makes sense. Okay. Right. So what, you know, back in the day, we used to deplete, deplete, deplete. Yes. You know, and starve, starve. And then carb starve, day. Yeah. One day, you carb and star- day. And starve, 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 you know, into the contest. So you wonder why you're, you know, you're not as full the day of or or the week, you know, peak week when you're supposed yeah. to be peaking out. So what I know today, it's a lot different. I mean, and I actually have a coach today now, you know, so yeah. knowing what I know, as long as I've been doing it for 40 some years, I still pay a coach because if I'm paying someone, Lori, I'm going to do what, you know. You're going to show up and you're going to do what they yeah, say. Exactly. So was it as hard for you this time around when you did the Masters National dieting and training than it was when you were in your younger years? It's harder. You don't, your body at 60 years old, your body doesn't recover as fast, Lori. <laughs> oh, no shit. I'm like not digging this part. I mean, I hate to say it. Um, yeah. You know, it's just you know, back in the day, you, I used to be able to do biceps. You know, on the third day, I'd be ready to go with biceps, you know, or quads. I mean, I used to squat Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Yeah. You know, that's how we used to just, you know, because I took second place in a contest and they said that your legs just weren't in proportion with your upper body. <sighs> that's all it takes, right? And I said, okay, I, I'm never going to lose a contest because my legs aren't in proportion. So I started, I implemented Monday, Wednesday, Friday squats, no matter what. And, you know, I did that for over a year and just my legs ended up being like 44 inches at one point, you know, oh so. So you had to adjust your training, obviously. Yes. yes. And what about your eating? Um, I, I mean, today, I mean, I still consume between 10 and 12,000 calories a day. I was, that was one of my questions. I was like, this dude is big. Okay, so how many calories a day does he have to intake to keep this size so right now i'm, I'm about 298 right now okay wow. okay and um i'm down i was up 315 but that was holiday bs food and course, drinking fun. and stuff like that yeah, fun stuff yeah. so i'm down to uh, 298 right now um but i'm still consuming between 10,000 calories a day um what would happen if you do what would happen once you start kind of going down to maybe 8,000? do you actually lose a lot of size very quickly now at your age or no no Okay. No, I don't lose the size. It's it's that fat that just doesn't come off that is fast. <laughs> I mean, right. It's the extra stuff back here. It's just yeah, you yeah. Know, I carried it in my face. You know, the first place that I, you know, my wife notices all the time. She goes, "Oh my God, you're getting heavy." <laughs> so I wasn't going to go into this until later, but we're already here. So let's just finish this. And that is, um, like for instance, I'm starting to take peptides for any kind of anti aging to hold some muscle for skin. I mean, obviously, I don't know if you believe in peptides. I didn't truly too much in the very beginning but i guess they're getting a little bit better 
Like I take pec, uh, I take some peptides for like a, a skin type of thing, and it mm -hmm. it like creates collagen from the inside. And then there's the peptides that help create uh, stimulate your own growth hormone. I mean, do you believe in any kind of peptides or anything like that? I mean, they are you're 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 on the you're you're on the right track. I mean, that is like the latest, greatest thing. Yeah. I just don't know enough about it yet. Okay. I mean, um, talking to my coach, you know, and, and I know he's mentioned several things. There's, the, uh, the I think, the PC500 for, for so, shoulder, you know, for, so for injury. So anyway, yeah. I'm going to start, I want to try that because I have a, I need a shoulder, a shoulder surgery and a bicep sur surgery, and I'm trying to avoid that. Talk to Nitro. He's like peptide Mr. He's, Mr. He's peptide me, yeah, right he now. He sent me a link right now. My too. God, he <laughs> even told me, he goes, I'm like a pen cushion. Yeah. You know, and I'm just like, that I couldn't do. But yeah, he's like all about peptides. And he actually kind of turned me on to him again. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, um, I was turned on to him maybe 10 years ago. And I was just like, ah. But now I, what I started doing probably 10 years ago is just I kind of dabbled a little bit in HGH, which just to let everybody know, it's not a steroid. It's a human growth hormone that we all have naturally in our bodies. And doesn't it start dying at 30? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we start dying yeah. at 30. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, as long as you go to your physician, I mean, and things like that. But what do you believe in that? I mean, how is that? Well, I mean, I'm all for ha being healthy overall. Mm -hmm. You know, and I mean, I'd like to think that at 60, I'm, I'm pretty doggone healthy. Um, you know, I, I go to my doctor regularly. I get blood drawn three times a year. And I mean, consistently, um, I'm all for testosterone therapy, mm -hmm. you know, for, in men. Um, you know, men quite you guys frankly, need it just like we need it. Women go through menopause. Men go through menopause. Yeah. Um, it's called low T. You yeah. know, and so many men's egos are so big that they think, no, I don't have a problem. They think it's all about their libido and their erections or whatever. You I know. heard you guys don't talk about it. <laughs> I mean, women talk about I menopause. I don't have a problem talking about women it. Women <laughs> talk about menopause all day long. Yeah. But men, apparently, they don't talk about the low T and right. what happens. And they start... Uh, anapause or is, there's a there's a word for it I forgot. yeah so i mean I, i'm all for that because listen if i can feel better yeah you know in overall yeah i mean i'm gonna do what it takes to do that and there's nothing wrong with testosterone therapy mm -hmm. 250 milligrams once a week um you know is is therapeutically healthy for you 100 percent because of the fact that we we lose that as we get older yeah. i tell women all the time i mean there's so many women that go they're like going through menopause they're gaining weight they're having hot flashes i'm like why you don't need to go through this. You can do hormone therapy and, and they're so afraid of cancers. And I was like, listen, I went to and asked all the questions, OBGYN, what's a cancer like? What's this if I take over? As long as you're balanced, yep. you're good. Yeah, women women have great stuff. The bioidentical um, stuff right now is yeah. phenomenal for women. Yeah. You know, the, the progesterone, the estrogen, and the testosterone. Right. Those three are the key, three key levels for women. Yeah, men, 100%. You know, men, you got to keep your estrogen down and your testosterone up. Correct. And the thing is that what happens with men when they start getting sluggish, their estrogen levels are are super high interesting th they start getting man boobs they start get, that, yeah, yeah they start getting the fat along the sides we used to call them bitch tits yeah <laughs> <laughs> well no bitch tit is a little bit different oh that's right that's fun that's a gynecomastity yeah. gynecomastity is from um you know from too much um, um hormones right um that build up in it looks like a, a, a nipple yeah you're right that's right that's but right. um man boobs are they just get saggy boobs where the men kind of fold over their boobs is that when people when you see you see an older man outside and all of a sudden their boobs kind of yeah like. it's a man boob because their estrogen level is so high they're losing the muscle they're lo lose, losing the muscle That's sad it is and all it takes if it's just a matter of taking a a supplement yeah whether you know an injection or it's a cream or a implant a pellet to help there's them. so many different things that and then you're going to feel better i mean i mean i i mean quite frankly at 60 i mean i feel like i'm 30 again because i've got the spring in my step again i do too I do too, 100%. I mean, I've been taking hormone therapy now for over 10, 15 years. Yeah. And um, I, I tell everybody about it because it's it's important. It's it's quality of life. Yeah. There you go. It's literally quality. And I, I think it gets such a bad rap, Lori, because you know they think, oh my gosh, he's on he's on he's on a steroid. No. And no, it, we're not. No, I'm on a thera therapeutic dose. Yeah. Okay. You know, I don't want. I mean, I still have all my hair. I still have. You know. You got a, lo you got a good <laughs> head of hair. Speaking of which, yeah. No, so, I mean, I've never I've never abused that side of it. You yeah. know, in this sport, because it yeah. can be it can be very abusive 100 percent. you know and that's the part Lori. when you asked me if i ever wanted to turn pro back then i didn't want to do what it took because i knew what it was going to take a lot it, it was going to take yeah. you a lot and i just didn't want to do that because yeah. i knew that i had other dreams of, of doing other things and I, the bodybuilding just wasn't my 
my cup of tea at the time. I think it shortens your life. There, there, it shortens your life. So many, unfortunately, so many bodybuilders that I know, men, abuse the steroids, and unfortunately, they had heart attacks on the basketball court. And it's yeah. just, it just shortened their life, you know. Yeah. And I heard, I always heard the term, and I know you heard it. Oh well, I'll die pretty. I never understood that. And I was just <laughs> like, you guys are idiots, yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. But um, so let's get into the gladiators just a little bit. So right. how was it actually coming into an already established team? It was tough. I mean, was, what did you have to overcome? How were the attitudes? I mean, because you're a big guy. What was it like? It was tough, Lori, because I mean, not only was I coming in as an established team, but I was coming in after one of your teammates went down. Yeah, that's true. You know, Turbo. so it's like, yeah. And so it's like, yes, I wanted to get that opportunity. <laughs> but in order for me to get that opportunity, someone had to go down. So it was kind of like a double edged sword there. You know, mm -hmm. it's like I felt I was on set. People, you know, I know that Galen and I have had this talk that he always felt like I was waiting for someone to go get hurt. And that wasn't the case at you all. You were. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been. I'm like, come on. Damn it. No, <laughs> no I'm kidding. You know, so, so it was tough because I had, I had big shoes to fill because Turbo is a phenomenal gladiator. Right. I mean, he was a different type of gladiator. He was, he was a little bit smaller than all of us, mm -hmm. but he was very athletic. Fast. He was yeah, fast. Yeah, and he was very athletic. Yeah. So, yeah, so I had big shoes to fill and uh, not... Um, not to uh, put down my athleticism, but it was, you know, at the time I, I was 300 pounds when I did the show. Mm -hmm. So I felt I moved pretty good, but it just was like real fast. Just everything was just happened. You know, yeah. when we filmed, we filmed two shows and in 13, you know, in 13 days. And oh my God. It, yeah, it, it, so crazy. it was brutal. It was brutal. Yeah. But I'll never forget the, my first day of filming. Um, you know, we were over at the, the, at the Mary Tyler Moore Studios. Mm -hmm. And this back when uh, we had like our own dressing rooms. And, and I remember they knocked on my door. I said, hey, Tower, we need you on set. It was like my first, first day. And I remember walking out and I ran right into Arnold Schwarzinger. Yeah, I remember hearing about that. That was awesome. And he looked at me, and I and I happened to be on. Wait, a, you went like this. He looked at me. Is he that much shorter well, than you? <laughs> no, <laughs> I was like, I was like, kind of like saying, "I'm sorry, yeah. sir." You know, <laughs> but um, and I was on the cover of, of a muscular development that that month, and so I was the cover, and he was down in a corner for Total Recall, and he looked at me. He says, "Oh, you're that big guy on the cover." He goes, "You look good." He goes, "Come to my dressing room," and I looked at him, and I says. Oh, and I looked at the set. I said, Arnold, I said, they need me on set. He goes, oh, go, go, yeah. go. He goes, come back when you're done. Sweet. So, I mean, so the whole time out there, my first day, I'm thinking, I just ran into Arnold. He yeah. wants me to come over to his dressing room. And, and so, long story short, I go over there and I knock on his door and he invites me in. And he starts talking to me about life. And he goes, no money in bodybuilding. None. He goes, None. get out. He goes, become a household name. Yeah, that's awesome. That was and good advice. I didn't understand it at the time, Lori. <laughs> you know, because our show was it was third season, second season, third season. Yeah, it kind of was like, eh. It was right there at the at the teetering point, and but after the fifth, sixth year seasons, I realized what he what he meant: become a household name. Right. You know, forget the bodybuilding. The show kind of it did. It took off. It yeah, really did. Year. The fifth year. Yep. I remember it was the fifth year high gear and the whole campaign and push for that. And yep, exactly. Now, what were your um, thoughts about the tour? When we went on tour, I mean, we hit 106 cities. Uh -huh. Now, did, were you in the very beginning of the tour? Or did missed, you come in? I missed, I think, 19 cities or 20 cities. Okay, so maybe the first, what, three weeks? Because it was like every, we had a, every city, I mean, every day we had a different. Mm -hmm. I remember getting on the bus and getting on the plane, going to the team. It was like, everybody was like, woohoo, yeah, we were all excited. And I always say the story. By the end of it, we were like, oh, fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> you know? No, I, I actually, I it was a, the tour... For me, it's a, a life experience that, I'll, that I'll, I could never, you could never pay for experience. I mean, we experienced a lot of life. We were of, rock stars. We were. We would roll into a city and people would be following us. Yeah. You remember we had our jackets and, and you know, and our leather jackets and people would be like, oh my God. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it was, we were living a life of rock stars. Was there a highlight for you on the, on the tour? Was there something that kind of stands out that you remember or was it just all just super cool? I mean... I mean, I mean, a highlight for me was just, and it's not really a, a, a I mean, I remember when I shattered my nose. I don't know if you remember that in Murfreesboro, oh Tennessee. God, that's right. And I remember them taking me to the emergency that night. And, and I mean, I, both my eyes were swollen shut. And I remember that going into this, this hospital and it was like a doctor and a nurse in this hospital. And that was all that was in there. And this guy is that they're asking me who my nearest next to kin is. Oh my God. You're like, wait a minute, this is not good. Yeah, I said, <laughs> no, you guys aren't going to operate. You're not gonna do anything on me right now. Just pack it full of stuff. And I said, I'll get, 
when I get back to LA, I'll go to my my uh, a plastic surgeon in, in LA. Yeah. But that was like just something that always stood out in my mind that the, like we were in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and they wanted to operate on my nose. <laughs> You're like absolutely <laughs> right. not. And he's probably a veterinarian or something filling in. <laughs> At the hospital. Exactly. I got it. <laughs> yeah. I'm on call tonight. Sorry. I know, right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But other than that, I mean, just, I mean, we, we, I loved what we did um, as a team where we always, uh, the, the fun times we had on the bus. It was the bus. I always tell the stories on the bus. Yeah. Like, you guys in the front of the bus. You were in the front of the bus yeah. all the time. Well, you guys were always in the back. So we well, never. I, well, we had to split it up somehow. <laughs> I mean, how many gladiators were on the bus? I mean, Ten. plus. Plus, plus our manager, plus our trainer. Uh-huh. And Adam Lee, the host. Adam Lee. So, yeah, 13, 13 15, yeah. 15 sometimes, you know? Yeah. That's a lot of people. So, yeah, you had to split up. There was, like, the front of the bus where you guys were, like, partying and drinking. And I always tell a story. It's, like, you know, the music was playing. And then we have the girls in the back. And we were either watching television or, or doing something back right. there. But we tried to split it up somehow, some way. Yeah, it was, it was a great time because, I mean, we all got along. Yeah, I mean, we had our biffs every once Come in a on, while. Come on, we had some drama. There was we, some yeah, drama. There was some drama going on, but for the most part, we, you know, we were just, you know, going through a time where we, you know, we were, I mean, we were hurt, we were tired, yeah. you know, and you know, I just remember crawling in my bunk all the time, you know, packing my elbows. How and did ice. you fit in that bunk? I didn't. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I laid on my side, <laughs> my shoulder hit. <laughs> because what? They're like that. Yeah. And, you know? uh, and then I just remember, you know, uh, you know, always, uh, I mean, those guys like, like Nitro and Gemini were always up front drinking. And then I remember uh, Laser and I, we, we tried to, <laughs> when we first started the tour, we had, remember we had our, our, our pots and pans and we were determined that we we're going to cook the whole time oh, and eat healthy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, I think that lasted about a week. Oh God. Right. We just got tired of lugging the stuff in and out every night. Okay. So I haven't talked about this before, but I do remember, were you, were you around when, um, Gemini and Nitro, they were like, we found out that they were kind of heading up the whole tour with Fish Off and they were making their own little sweet little deals. And then we all found out they were like making more money. Yeah. And, and we were just like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know, it's just like, that's the kind of little drama that's so funny that nobody really talks about, but it was there, yeah. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Yeah, it was, it was always, we always called it the Nitro show. Yes. In the nitro, you know. And listen, we say that in love and fun. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. You know, because, I mean, you know, you gotta yeah. love Dan's tenacity and his drive. and you know, He would all... call it the nitro show. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I remember that drama. But you know something? I didn't care. Yeah. I really didn't care because we were making, well, I mean, what, like almost four grand a week, something like yeah. that. Yeah, I was making 10. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> mm. <laughs> But, You're like, oh, it was the ice show. Yeah, okay. no, but you know, our expenses were paid. Where, how many cities we were in? Uh, yeah, I met an ex-wife on there. You know. <laughs> Speaking of which, did you ever date any gladiators? Hook up with them or contenders throughout uh, your? I mean, never, never uh, hooked up with the gladiators uh, okay. on a show. Um, but um, you know, I did. I did meet my uh, a wife. You know, from tour, and I remember. Was she a contender? She was a contender in no way. In, in Texas. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. And. Uh, but uh, the uh, I remember a um, uh, guy from Poison, um, Brett Michaels. Uh, I was good. I used to train him, and we, were, we used to train, oh, wow. we That's train together. Cool. And I remember him telling me before I went on tour, he goes, "Enjoy the tour." He goes, "But don't bring the tour home." Oh my God! What great <laughs> advice! That's so he goes, Have funny. Fun. And then and I remember coming home with with my you know my ex. Right. And he's like, "What did I tell you? Don't bring the tour home." <laughs> You're like, "Well." Yeah. So, um, but that was uh, that was fun. But we, you know, we I just remember like Laser and I renting a motorhome while I was following the tour bus all through Southern California. Well, remember when Billy and his wife Thunder, yep. uh, or Kathy? I don't think it was his wife. I don't know if they were married or not. But they followed us the yep. entire time because they didn't want to be on the bus and they were like cooking and doing all their yep. own thing. Yep. They were in a van. I remember, like yeah, a, a conversion van. Yeah. How was it driving an RV and following us for a while? Was that crazy? We really didn't follow the bus bus. We just knew what city, like say oh, gotcha. we were, we were yeah. in San Diego and we had to go to like Sacramento. Okay. We just, we just, we were up there. See, that's awesome. And I uh, never knew that. You never really? No. And I remember Nitro and I missing the, pl- uh, missing the bus in, in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> You know, that's a whole nother episode. <laughs> right. Why did you miss it? Let's talk about that. <laughs> I was having, we were having fun, like Brett said. Oh, my God. No, it was, it was some good times. So we were partying and hooking up and having a good time. Yeah. Before you met your wife. 
Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. I yeah, think my, yeah, my wife did. knows. My wife knows. I mean, it's the past. Exactly, you and know? it's fun to talk about it. I mean, yeah, and she laughs about it. So, what was the, uh, let's say, either celebrity slash athlete, like the one of the highest, um, coolest celebrity or athlete that you met while we were doing Gladiators? Well, I mean, I had the, the privilege to be part of the Planet Hollywood. Uh, um, grand opening series, you know, throughout the United States. and Nice. Um, I remember that. So I was able to, you know, be a part of a lot of Planet Hollywood grand openings in Hawaii and, um, you know, San Diego, Dallas, and wherever, you know, and hanging out with Arnold, Sylvester, okay. Bruce, and Demi. To me, it was just like... Ooh, how was Demi? Oh, sexy. Really? Oh, sexy, yeah. Oh, I can only imagine. I mean, her voice is yeah. just like... Oh. Yeah, I mean, she's one of those women that you just look at and you're, you're, you're just, you're hot. You're sexy, yeah. You know, and and you're classy, and she's still hot and sexy yeah. at her age today. Yeah, yeah. Bruce, Bruce is okay. Bruce has aged a little bit, but um, but I mean, Maria was just Maria was Maria. I mean, she's a very beautiful woman, right? Just naturally beautiful, and that is I'll never so forget cool. when we were in um, in Maui, Arnold and I we were we were messing around. I mean, because he, he's a total prankster, jokester, really. Oh, big time. And he and I were talking, and. Um, and as a matter of fact, I can I can send you a picture for that of Arnold and I and Maria. I'd like that. And uh, so we were sitting there and we're talking, and all of a sudden he goes, "Ah, Maria, what are you doing?" And she's like grabbing into his bicep, and she looks at him. And she goes, "Aren't you going to introduce us?" <gasps> oh. He looks at me and he looks at her. He goes, "Ah, he knows who you are." <laughs> No, he's absolutely right. I know who she yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. I mean, she wanted to know who you were. Right. So, but it just, you know, just he's just funny. I mean, he's. But I think that was the biggest um, one of. The, and the other thing that I think that I had the privilege of uh, uh, being, you know, part of is the the uh, Make a Wish Foundation. Yeah, I heard about that. You know, That's think, an amazing story I think, uh, too. You know, when uh, someone's dying and their last wish is to meet me, and I think to myself, why me? Hey, you know. I, okay, so on. I mean, think about that though. Our show was. A number one hit iconic show of the '90s, Steve. Yeah. We were we were big. We just didn't know really how big we. We kind of had a, a a little ink inkling of how big we were at the time, but we were big, right? You know, and I we we talk about like being superheroes all the time. We were to a lot of people. Yeah. So you were to that little kid. You were that superhero. You were a live superhero. Yeah. You know that he could actually see and touch. And I mean, that's just fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and that to me is just a, that's a legacy. Yeah. That I want you know people to remember me by. Is, Absolutely. You know, not you know it doesn't matter about Tower or how many TV shows I've been on or how many commercials I've done. That means nothing. It's what I've done you know um, with my fame or my stardom or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> or I always say we got we had like we had like thirty minutes of fame. You know how there is like a five minute fame kind uh -huh. of thing. There's yeah. you get we had five. 30. We had thirty <laughs> <laughs> because we were like what eight nine years. Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, but you know, but it, it, it is funny though, Lori, how iconic of a show it was thirty three years ago. Yeah. Okay. I mean, my wife and I, we were out at, at Mastro's down in Malibu this summer for her birthday, and we we're it was a packed bar, and we were waiting for our table. And we we're standing at the bar. We we're getting a cocktail before dinner, and you just—it was filled with these guys. There was um, uh, uh, SC was playing, and they were all down. A bunch of college guys, and you know, when someone's just staring at you, and you're oh thinking, yeah, and you're like, and you just want to say, "What's up?" Yeah, what's up? You know, right? You gotta, so they call my name, and then they and they go, "All right, who'd you play for?" I oh, go, "Oh, they thought you were a big old football yeah, player." Yeah, I said, I, "I didn't play." And he goes, "No, no, no." He goes, "Who'd you fucking play for?" Yeah, I said. Ah. I didn't, I didn't play. He goes, come on. And I said, all right, do you remember a show called the American Gladiators? He goes, oh, I fucking knew it. Yep. Yeah. He, yep. he goes, which one were you? I said, Tower. He goes, oh my God. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and next thing you know, the whole bar is like uproaring about this and they're taking they one pictures and, and there's my wife. She's like, oh my God, I don't believe this. There's a bunch of boy kids, you know, boys. But it's so cool. You know, and, but to show you that it's just 33 years later. Yeah. 30 I mean you look amazing too you look almost exactly like you did during your gladiators well. I mean we all have like a little you know things or either, but no seriously you look awesome oh, and so you. yes people are going to recognize you yeah you know you know and, and that's why that's, that's, I'm excited to see what this documentary oh yeah is you know I mean uh, talking to Tony um, our director he says Steve he goes be prepared for 40 million people to tune into the first episode yeah 40 million people Lori I know I know I know we're gonna be relevant for another like 30 days. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna have 15 <laughs> minutes now. <laughs> 
I know exactly. <laughs> Woohoo, go. Okay, what can we do in 15 days? <laughs> yeah. But it's a lot different now, Lori. Yeah, it Instagram, is. Instagram, Facebook, social I mean, media. Can you imagine what we would have been like back then <sighs> oh. if we had all these things today? But then again, would we be... I mean, because now we were talking about the other day when you were a celebrity back then and you were on television, you were a celebrity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I mean, I can look in JLo's closet. Yeah. I can look in, you know, whoever I, I'm following and I can look inside their life. And it's kind of like if I saw him on street, I'd be like, oh, that's kind of cool. But it wouldn't be like it was back then when we were on television, like, oh, shit, look who that is, you know? So I don't know. It's kind of diluted it. It is because I think the more accessible you are to people, yeah. whether it's physically or, you know, virtually, I think people just kind of nonchalantly go, take it for granted. Yeah. Versus like when we, the only tough chance you got to see us was when you saw us on TV or at a personal appearance. Right. Okay. Exactly. So those were the two outlets for people to actually touch, feel, and see us. Yep. But yep. now you're right. Whenever, I think whenever you have such an easy exposure of mm -hmm. something, people are like, oh, it's, 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 it's like only, a big deal. It's only J-Lo or yeah. it's only, you know, yeah. you know, but I still think it's. However, only... I did see J-Lo and, and I, I was at my doctor's office and it was in Culver City uh -huh. and I saw her out of the corner of my eye and she was with two other people and we were going up the elevator together in my head. I'm like, holy fuck, that's J-Lo. Oh my God, that's J-Lo. And I was like, do I, do I introduce myself? I was like going through my uh -huh. head and I was like, no, don't bother her. Don't bother. But it was just like, I was in the same elevator with her. I was like, so cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, J-Lo is huge. Oh. <laughs> yeah, on. I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so I think, I think this, this documentary is going to be, it's going to be huge. I think it is going to be huge. You know, and I think, uh, I think that uh, it's going to take all the people that watched us and it's going to be a new generation also. Right. That, you know, because it's funny, when you talk to the younger people, they say, well, my parents told me about this show. I always go like this, go on YouTube. Right. <laughs> just Google it. <laughs> just Google it and go on YouTube and you just watch what we did, right, right, right. you know? <laughs> I said, but be careful what you see on there. Yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. Because don't believe everything you read. <laughs> there was a couple of young kids in the gym last night when I was training and he goes, uh, he goes, oh, I was flipping through YouTube and I saw some kind of like, a uh, weird kind of like gauntlet type thing. Was that you? And I was just like laughing going, oh my God. It's And he was, he's like 15, you know, right. 15 or 16 years old. And it's just like so funny. But yeah, it's the, I think we're going to be, I think we're going to have the relevancy again for another 15 yeah. to 30 days, maybe hopefully longer to be kind of cool. Um, so when, when you were doing the gladiators, where were the coolest place you got to travel to? Um, Tokyo. Okay. Yeah, Tokyo was fun. Um, you was did in, the bang bang thing, didn't you? No, we did. Uh, we did Tokyo Twelve TV station. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, Jim and I came in and we uh, they we explained what was what we were doing and they converted it into in Japanese. Um, that was really a, a, neat, a neat trip. And I, I think also I was in London one time for and that was a um, it, was, it was before the, the uh, UK Gladiators uh, was even popular. Oh yeah. So, um, but yeah, Tokyo was fun. Tokyo was, was, was one yeah, of the yeah. highlights. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? I would say, actually, God, I didn't get to go to Tokyo. I gave that one away to Shannon, believe it or not. No, it was just Jim and I did that one. Well, no, there was another one. They sent some gladiators to Japan, and they had their own gladiator-type show, and it was called Bang, Bang, Bang. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It, I just didn't want to be on a plane for 15, 18 hours. I forgot what it was, yeah. but I was just like, oh, I don't really want to do that. Um, London, London, England. Mm. I mean, all of that, seeing the castles, yeah. and then... Getting to go over to Cannes, I saw Cannes, south of France, was beautiful. Oh, my God. And then um, Monaco. Um, so traveling up through there, that was probably one of my highlights. Yeah. But, you know, it's kind of, it, what's so cool about it is we would have never had these experiences and traveled like this if we were never gladiators. Right. What would your life, do you think, would have been like if you weren't a gladiator? Boy, I don't know. I mean, would I have stayed in California? I don't know. Would I you mean, have? I mean, I'd like to think I would have, but. Uh, or would you have went on and been a farm boy? No. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what the bizarre thing about it is all these places that we were able to travel to, you know, like uh, my wife, Terry, today, like when we go there, she goes, oh, I saw I've been here. She, I, she goes, what would you do? I says, I didn't get a chance to do a lot because I was always working. Right. You know, so like when you go into like Tokyo, they, you know, drop you up at the hotel and you have a little bit of downtime, but then they're, they're, they're shuffling you back and forth to the venue. 
Right, or, exactly. You know, remember we went up to, um, uh, remember, I think you and I and, and Diamond and um, Sabre went up to uh, Toronto. Remember to the... Um, oh, yeah, that's right. And um, again, we didn't get to see t- the city of Toronto. No. <laughs> we went to, we went from the theme park to our hotel yep. and back to the theme park. Exactly. So we really never had a chance to enjoy the scenery Mm-mm. of our, you know, of, of experiencing any culture or anything like that of the of the country. Same thing on the tour. I mean, we went to 106 and we really yeah. never got to see anything. You know what? It, it opened my eyes to, oh, my God, every city in the United States is kind of built the same. <laughs> it really, it did yeah. open my eyes to yeah. that. I was like, oh, OK. So I, I totally get this now, how they planned. And that's like city city mapping, you know. Yeah. But you're right. We never got to actually see a lot. I mean, I've been a lot of places. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I haven't really had a yeah. chance to enjoy so, um, but I think, did you know that uh, on the tour that uh, late at night that when you guys were probably all sleeping that I used to go up with Gator and I used to, he used to let me drive? No way. Uh-huh. Wait, he had to have, because I remember you took over the driving of the bus a couple of times uh-huh. and we were all freaked out yeah. about that. We were like, no, he, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we're, you know, we going on Interstate 10 going through, you know, Texas. Yeah. And it's just a straight highway. And, oh, that's cool. You know, he put it on cruise control. He'd get out. I'd hold the steering wheel and I'd sit down and, and he'd go back, go to the bathroom. And, you know. I drove one of those, by the way, 30 foot, 30, I don't know how long they get. Ours was but, a 44. Okay. Yeah. I think uh, when I moved from Florida to California, it was like a 30 foot something they're scary as shit to drive i mean a big semi goes past you and you're like whoa yeah and i kept thinking okay if these 75 year old men on the highway can drive these i can drive these oh yeah they're dead inside so they're not fearful (laughs) (laughs) okay so when you were like in the height of your career was there anything that you wanted to do? A height of gladiators. You were like on top of the world. Was there something you go, okay, this is what I want to do next. This is where I want to go. I wanted to kind of follow in Arnold's footsteps. I wanted to be the next, I guess, um, superhero or slash big guy on the screen. Okay. That was kind of my, my, my goal or dream right. to, do, to do that. And um, I mean, I had a couple opportunities where, you know, I was starting a couple. I launched the Warner Brothers Network, a show called Muscle. I remember that. That's know, so cool. And, um, you know, did a couple, you know, low, low grade movies as yeah. we all did, you know, and uh, didn't make a ton of money. But um, and then it just it just never happened. I, I feel you on this one. It was like everything that I, I tried to do, like, OK, this is it. OK, this is it. All of a sudden I went, uh huh. Yeah. I was like, okay, that wasn't it. <laughs> you know, yeah. next. Keep well, moving, keep I mean, moving. I don't know about you, Lori, but my entire life is, is I've never had a plan for anything. Never had a script or never had, I, I didn't go to college. Are you my brother? Is this what happened? I mean, I was the exact same way. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I remember just coming out here. I, I mean, I'm a winger. I, I yep. wing it. Yep. You know, and um, so if it didn't happen, I just went on to the next thing, you know. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because it's exactly, I mean, I never had that. I, I didn't have my parents to where they, they, they molded me and pushed me in a certain area. So, yes, it was like, okay, what's next? You know, and I knew doors were going to open, which is interesting. In the back of my mind, I always knew something because if I, I was working towards something, a door was going to open. Right. And I just, you had to you had to see it, though. That right. was the other thing that was really interesting. I was the same way. I wanted to be an action hero. I wanted to be the next, like, Angelina Jolie. <laughs> <laughs> We could have been in a movie together. Yeah, we should just exactly. have somebody write it for us right well, now. I mean, <laughs> you know, one of the things is that, I mean, that the gladiators did allow me to do is, is that I remember waking up one morning and saying, okay, I want to have $30,000 of passive income coming in every month. Wow. <clears throat> that was, That's that was pretty it. aggressive. So, I mean, this is the late nineties, you know, okay. and uh, so I worked real hard to make that happen and then happened. I okay. Mean, so, I mean, through endorsements, right. You know, through metrics, through Justin boot company. I mean, I'm a, a gladiator bodybuilder and I'm endorsing a country boot boot. Okay, wait a minute. So you're telling me that when you were a gladiator, you were endorsing metrics, Justin Boots. Okay, so see that was my I was gonna have I was gonna ask you one other question that is what obstacles did you hit when you were doing gladiators? And I know what mine was, but you just answered something that I don't know how you did that. Because they want to tower the American gladiators. As seen. How did that work? I just, just did as seen on. Okay. As what does on. that mean? As seen on American Gladiators. Not, okay, as seen on American Gladiators. So you didn't wear your uniform? Nope. Okay. Nope. But they got to use your name? Yep, because I trademarked my name. Did Gladiators really give a shit about that? Um, it never came up. Okay. It never came up. But yeah, so I mean, Justin Boot, uh, um, you remember all those neoprene 
elbow yeah. pads. With the, remember, it saved us all from turf Dude, burning. that's like awesome that. for you. I mean, they, they were paying me twenty thousand dollars a year for those. Um, that's awesome. And they said they all they asked me is, could you get these the other gladiators to wear them? I says, hell yeah. So here we were endorsing <laughs> your damn product, and I mean, we didn't I even know it. I, I, mean, I remember walking out. You know how I used to go up and hang tough, and the camera would be on you. And I remember going up there and having my elbow pad, you know, on my arm like this. And I remember reaching to it and just pulling it up, and the Force Ten would be there. Those oh guys were just like, just you know what? That's pants, awesome. You know, just loving Good it. Good for you. You know, so I figured out ways that because I knew that the money wasn't always going to be there. Right. You know, as we all know. Right. And uh, so I just tried to think outside the box a little bit, you know, and utilize what we, we didn't have, again, the power of the internet or anything like that. So no. it was all phone calls, writing letters. Right. I mean, that's how I got the Justin Boot contract. I mean, I mean, they, wow. were, they were paying big money for me to wear their boots. See, that's amazing. Um, so that's, um, I think, one of the benefits of, of the show. Yeah. You were smart. A lot of a lot of gladiators. I mean, including myself. I didn't even think about going as in as seen as because mm -hmm. everybody was like, "Okay, we want you to do this and we want you to do that." The girls were a little different, though, and I'm going to be honest with you. You guys had a little bit more advantage over when it came to endorsing and stuff because you were big male bodybuilders, mm -hmm. and so you were that that sexy icon male. To where the women, we were more muscular. We really didn't fit into a lot of their genre as far as their advertising. They wanted at that point in time the the swimsuit models and stuff. Mm -hmm. But we were like, Ugh. you know, we were big, and yeah, they were like, ah. you guys are all sexy in your own way. That I felt that any company would want to latch on. I think it's mm -hmm. all how you pitched it. Yeah, I know, and I got to look back. I mean, I don't know about you, but when I look back on the the show thirty years later, I just go. Oh my God! I mean, what do you think when you go back and watch <laughs> yeah. the show? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know what I was thinking, slicking my hair back and all the, you know. But you know, one of the things is I always said to myself, though, Lori, is is a company's not going to say go, you know, go into the CEO's not going to go into his office one day and say, I think I'm going to reach out to Tower from American. Ladies. Exactly. You know, you got to put it in their their minds. One hundred percent. You yeah. got to put that idea. You know, like you and I were talking about water sponsors for you know for shows like that. Yeah. All it takes is just you know you getting in front of enough people. One hundred percent. You know, so that's was always yeah. my approach. A no doesn't mean that that, uh, that you're done with that one. It just means no right now. Right. Or you go on to the next one. Exactly. Okay. Thank you very much. Next. Yep. And that's always good been for my, you. That's really awesome that you did that. You know, and I do that in my business today. Yeah. You know, um, you know, in, and we're going to get into that in a minute, with what <laughs> you're doing, too. Um, was there any like competitiveness with the guys? I know the girls. Girls were super competitive with one another. I mean, we were like even with some of the guys when it came to personal appearances. But I mean, whether, whether on the show or off the show, was there any competitiveness with you guys? I mean, I think, yeah, we always thought that Nitro was thought he was better than. You know, he thought that yeah, it was thought, real. Yeah. It wasn't even like we're making this shit up. <laughs> you know, so I mean, I mean, again, I, 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 I'm like Teflon. I don't let stuff bother me. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, some stuff. I mean, if if you let it fester, you it's just it's just not healthy for you to, right. to, to let that fester inside of you. So I, I just felt just let it flow off me and just you know be grateful for the fact that I'm I'm here. I have yeah. an opportunity, and that's the way I've always looked at it. Because if you let those little things bother you, and then every little thing will bother you. Because in the entertainment industry, everyone has egos. <sighs> Huge. Ten gladiator egos. Exactly. Come on. <laughs> yeah. So we were dealing with, you know, ten, you know, nine other egos other than your own. Yeah. You know, and it was huge. You know, so I just I never really got into the conflict. Uh, I never got into the, you know, the, the drama with the, with the with the whole drug testing thing and all that kind of stuff. Just because just let it go. Yeah, you know, exactly. Give me a cup of pee and, and I'm done. Yeah, that was like no big deal. I mean, yeah. that was so ridiculous. And that was just that just came from the, the WWF wrestling because they were all you know, and it's sad that it kind of trickled down into us, mm -hmm. you know, because they were all testing positive. And so I hate to say it, but even like Dan's book was like, well, that just, you know, they gave us a six month notice and we could just get it out of our system. And it was yeah. just like, that was ridiculously <laughs> stupid, you know, but yeah. competitiveness, it's like, I mean, we, I know, I remember with Ray and I, Zap, I mean, she, Zap was very competitive back then, even though she will swear she wasn't right oh, I know. but when it came to personal appearance or something i mean she would undercut you know i mean hawk would undercut us to death remember mm. that for a while yeah. god well, rest that man, man sold yes hawk was a businessman so he was a, uh, he had an mba and and so he was all about the money oh yeah 
He's like, you guys are going out for like two and three thousand. Screw it, I'll go out for a thousand. We were like, oh my god, we're gonna kill you. I'll do five of those. Yes. (laughs) We're like, oh my god, we're gonna kill him. (laughs) Oh, that was so incredibly out of it. But yeah, it was um, it was really interesting. What doors opened for you? I think when you when when I'd walk into an audition, I mean, people wouldn't know who I was. I mean, whether I got the part, whether I was right for the part or not. I mean, when I got the, the Warner Brothers uh, for this part, I believe being on Gladiators was the reason that I got it because I was just coming off a show and, you know, they, they were launching a show. And I think, yeah. I mean, it worked out well. I mean, I was up against every every big guy in the industry, you know. Of, you know, And there used to be a, I don't know for you when you went on auditions, but there was, you know, Laser and I were always, went on the same commercial auditions. Yeah, I, I always saw Ray. She yeah. would always, you know what she would do? Oh, she used to piss me off. I caught this. <laughs> She used to sit there and try to psych me out before the audition. Mm -hmm. She'd come over and she'd sit next to me and go, this is such bullshit, blah, blah, blah. And she'd start talking shit and try to get me out of my zone. And I'm like, Uh after a while, I was like, oh. And I'd see her in audition and I'd like turn the other way. Uh Well, that's what Nitro does to laser. Oh, interesting. Yeah, he he mind screws Jim big time. Yeah. Yeah, and and, he, and I always say, why do you let him get to you like that? <laughs> you know, why? Because he can. Because he can. <laughs> because he can, he can. Uh-huh. that's why. Yeah, but uh, oh, yeah. I mean, so I, I think the biggest door that opened for me was just the fact that I was able to walk into auditions and they knew who I was. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't have any, you know anything major change in my life. But it gave you a leg up. Correct. No doubt. Yeah, it definitely did, you know, and, um, you know, and even in today, you know, later, you know, 30 years, 25 years later, you know, it still helps. Still does. It really does. I I mean, it's not that I go around name dropping. Right. If if they bring it up, you know. You don't have a hat that says tower? No. I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, No. (laughs) Did you ever get to go into uh, any Playboy parties, any like super amazing industry parties that you can remember? I mean. That was always my dream to go to the Hef's house, but yeah. that never happened. But um, I mean, I, I was able to go to a lot of like the Beverly Hills, uh, uh, the Who's Who um, parties with um, with actually our, our plastic surgeon doctor, you know, right. at the time, you know, yeah. and um, and he just like was every Hollywood person in the world that you go like, oh wow, you worked on her. <laughs> See, that's awesome. So that, that was interesting to be. But again, it wasn't who I, I, I can count on one hand, Lori, how many times I've been out probably in, in L.A. since I've been out here for, for 30, or almost 40 years. I'm sure that you could double that up. Come on. Uh, no, actually going to a club <laughs> or going out. I mean, yeah. I, I'm just, that's not who I am really. So tell me about your real estate. You are killing it right now. You're doing good. I mean, you've been <clears> in <throat> it how many years now? Five years. You've been doing it for five years, and that five years, I mean, if you if you did anything in real estate, like you dedicated yourself in bodybuilding and gladiators and everything else, I mean, you've dedicated yourself and you're killing it. So tell me about, you know, where you're at, what you're doing. Well, I mean, I, I, mean, I work for an amazing company, Keller Williams, right now, and, um, you know, my wife, you know, we own, th- we own three Keller Williams. Wow. So we own one in Westlake. Go big or go home for you, yeah. man. Uh, we have one in Ranch Cucamonga, and she has one in Encino. We're doing a relaunch in Encino right now. Okay. So um, it's a great organization. We have, you know, over 800 agents, on, you know, under um, our three offices. But for myself personally, I mean, again, yeah, I, I approach my real estate career like I did anything else in my life. Mm-hmm. Okay. Commitment and consistency. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it you takes. Know, and if, if you if you apply those two two models, yeah, uh, anything in life, quite frankly, you know, raising kids. If you're if you commit to raising your kid, you got to be consistent. Yeah, your marriage, you have to commit and you have to be consistent. How many kids you got? That I know of. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, well, I, I've got three three kids. Okay, yeah, three kids and, and two stepdaughters. Okay, um, so. But, uh, you know, just, but in my real estate business, Lori, um, you know, it's just that commitment. You see a lot of agents, because you're an agent. Mm-hmm. You just see a lot of people. I used to be. <laughs> you just see a lot of people that want to be an agent, yeah. but they don't do the work or they don't put the time in. The work is hard. I'm going to be honest. The work is, it can be hard. Well, it's, there is no easy, there is no fast quarter. Right, exactly. There is, there, you know, people think that, oh, commission check, you know, $25,000 commission check. Well, it, you have to work your ass off to get that. 100% you do. You know, so, um, and, I, and I'm not the type of person, I don't buy my leads. Mm-hmm. You know, I never believed in, um, you know, paying Zillow, Realtor, or these, these, and these online lead companies, uh, because I work too hard for that commission. 
Right. Okay. And that's kind of now we're in a, a unique market right now. You Very. Know? Uh, you know, where people got used to the 2.75 or 2.5 interest rates. Mm -hmm. Now, oh my God, they're at 5.9, <laughs> you know? Yeah. If people freak out <laughs> when it just jumps up a little. Well, yeah. it just means that they can't afford the bigger house that they wanted. Right. That's all that means. But historically, Lori, you know, it's still 5.9 or 6% is still historical low. Great. Because yeah. back in our day, I mean, our parents, my, my dad told me that interest rates were something like 18% yeah. back in his day. My first house that I bought in 91 um, was 14%. Wow. Yeah, and uh, so in today's market, I just, you, you gotta be different and unique and stand out. I mean, yeah. there's you know over, over 300,000 real estate agents in Southern California alone, and you know, how do you become a household name, like mm -hmm. Arnold said, yep. and how do you become the first, the, the forefront of a person's mind when they're ready to buy or sell? Yep. And so you have to be unique and different. And, um, I saw your your uh, it was was it a listing presentation or a pamphlet you send out or you have in your hand you have like your photos on it like yeah. tower and stuff like I mean it's brilliant that you do that well it's it's uh, my coach I have a coach for real estate also okay you know and it's, again if you want to be successful in anything pay for a coach yeah pay for a coach because again you don't have to think about the little things that's his job and and do what he tells you to do mm -hmm. because the other, if you don't if you don't then you're wasting your money 100 so he tell me remember one time he told me he says go ahead and change your your facebook profile put a gladiator picture up there because when i first got in business my wife as the owner she's like ah you don't need that gladiator stuff no one knows who that is anymore oh, bullshit they do and <laughs> so i put it up there met with him the next week he goes what happened he goes oh i said oh my god it blew up mm -hmm. i said oh, it just he goes okay now he goes let's create a listing presentation um so we created this and basically my life in the entertainment industry on this book cover. It's a hard down book cover. Cool. That's all imposed with my the pictures of, of muscle muscle magazines and gladiators and whatnot. And it's hard bound. And when I walk into my listing presentation with this, uh, with all their information, it's, it's a personalized book for them that's bound. And uh, they will look at that. They look at me and they go, I knew we knew you from somewhere. So now they've already accepted me in their house when they watched me. Yeah. Now it's conversational piece of what I'm doing now. Now you're building rapport. It's conversation, Lori. Yeah. You know, real estate is all about getting that conversation going and them to trust you. People buy from people they like. Exactly. So there, I learned that in my business yep. when I owned a few businesses. It was like, they will buy from you if they like you. Mm -hmm. And that, just what you're doing was brilliant, how you were mm -hmm. doing that and setting up the rapport and having that conversation, having them trust you. Yep. Because real estate is all about trust. And you're, you're dealing with the number one asset of, of, of a person. I mean, it could be the last bit of money that they have before yeah. they pass away or, or you know, a retire or whatever you know, it may be. Mm -hmm. So they got to trust you, you know. Well, you just recently did a commercial as well. Yes. So, again, the market's shifting. Yeah. You know, the listings are less and less coming. Buyers are sitting back right now and thinking, okay, I think we're going to wait for a deal. There aren't going to be no deals, buyers. We're going to wait. <laughs> I'm so, I got so sick of that. I'm going to wait. So I just, you know, there's just, there, there's so many things. On the, the last three listings that I went on, um, every house needed something, whether it's flooring, paint, kitchen rehab, whatever it may be. But they wanted to get top dollar still for it. And mm -hmm. I told them, you really can't get top dollar in a condition it's in. And they I remember go, those days. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm just being truthful and honest with them. I said, if I list your house right now in the condition it's in, I'd probably list it for about 800000 mm -hmm. Okay. But if we put 35000 into it and put, you know, a little touch up here, there, and, and that, I said, I could, I'd list it for a million, uh, probably a million fifty. Yeah. Huge difference. You know, and so I said, do the math. I said, right. that's a good return on your investment. Well, we can't afford 35000 Right. So that's when I came up with this concept with my commercial, you know, and so my commercials basically is, is don't leave money on the table. Mm -hmm. You know, my team will go ahead and fix your house mm -hmm. up front and it close. When we close escrow, you pay escrow with your proceeds. Brilliant. That's awesome. You know, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's Aaron right now, 4,000 times, um, a month, wow. um, in over 440,000 households. I mean, it was Aaron all during on the golf channel during the masters. Love I that. had a buddy of mine call me and said, I saw your commercial seven times today. So, you know, and I've gotten two listings off it already. Oh, it just paid for itself. Yeah, you know, I got a million six and a million five. So See, that's so cool. You know, so again, me thinking I, I'm creating my own uh, my own lead source mm -hmm. instead of wait, relying on someone else to send me a lead. And then you have to pay them a 30 percent referral fee. Uh, I don't like doing that. I just never thought that that was part of my business model. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, again. Um, we're going to be running now for, and I've timed this just right because we're going to be running for three months and then the documentary is supposed to be coming out in June. 
Good. I don't know if you heard that. Yes, I did. Okay, so June. So people are going to go, oh, that's the guy from the commercial. Yes. Oh, the documentary, commercial. And my coach is now wants me to find a billboard on Ventura Boulevard. Oh, there you go. And do as seen on TV shot from the commercial. So they correlate the billboard, the commercial, and documentary. Good for you. That should be amazing for you. So so where can they find you now? Uh, they can. You can find me at, at Big H Homes. Okay. You know, just at Big H Homes, Instagram, Facebook. Um, I mean, it's all right there. So you branding yourself across the board. Brand myself across the board. Beautiful. Yeah. Good for yeah. you. And um, you know, the the, the thing about uh, what I do today is is I enjoy it. That makes all the difference. You're not working when you no. enjoy what you're yeah. doing. You're not working. You know, and in the fact, I, I mean, I. It's funny because my wife. Can I talk a little bit about my wife? Please. Okay. So you know, my life today is just just like amazing because I work with my wife. We train together. And we we prep our food together, and so it's like people. Do you go, ever get tired of her? No, that's the thing, Lori. <laughs> I mean, this is my fourth go around. I'm no I'm no beginner at this. Right. <laughs> so I, I'm I'm not a, you know, I'm not a quitter. I'm right. gonna keep doing it till I get it right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and but you know, here's the thing: is just that we just we both have the amazing interest. The same. I mean, who can I? Who can? I mean, she's she's 60, 62, mm -hmm. and she's still competing at a national level. And she looks amazing. You know, and uh, for us to be able to do that together is a, I mean, there's not many partners. If mm -hmm. I'm competing for a show and she's like, oh, you really need to do that. It's always that nag. Well, we have each other to support each other on the 5 a.m. fasted cardio. So if I don't want to get out of bed or she doesn't want to get out of bed. She's like, come on, God damn it, let's go. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, and in fact, and we go into work together. See, that's, that's, that's really it. That's amazing. Yeah. That's it's, so cool. So it's that. like I found my unicorn. Yeah. Uh, found your lobster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the Friends. Remember the Friends episode? Yeah, yeah. Evie's like, yeah. it's your lobster. <laughs> yeah, so it's just, uh, you know, and that, that's, a, again, not expecting it. You know, just kind of keep my eyes and ears open and, yeah. and you find in it. So when you least expect it, like you said, doors open. Doors open. I will have you back because of the fact that after the documentary hits, I want to do an episode of why there are two documentaries. And apparently, nobody wants to talk about it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so there's a little controversy there, but we'll but talk about that. Will the second documentary ever happen? I don't know. That's, well, who knows? I heard ES. <laughs> Can I say that? ESPN, oh. yeah. ESPN 30 for 30. I was doing the other doc. Yeah. Yeah, but I heard that they have a shelf right now because there's no story. Uh oh. How much can you talk about uh -oh. knowing on it? <laughs> I know, I know. And I love it. I, love I know, it. I know. But I do. I want to talk about it. I do want I want to talk about it and I know that we can talk about it in a way that it's respectful for everyone. Exactly. But I do want to talk about why there's two documentaries coming out. Yeah. Okay, if the Ours second one ever. First one, here's my philosophy. The first one to the you know, to the plate is always gonna prevail. Well, here is my thing. Do you wanna be on something that airs just in the United States, or do you want to be on something that airs across the globe? Correct. You know, Correct. So and I always use the analogy of the iPhone. Okay, iPhone was the first touchscreen phone. Yeah. There's been a lot of knockoffs or tr wannabes. Yeah. The iPhone's still number one. <laughs> <laughs> they were the first. I love. To, we they, think so much alike. It's they great. They were first to the plate. <laughs> Oh, my God, Steve, thank you so much for being on today. Oh, Please so come much. back. Let's talk about that again, what we were talking about, because we could get into that. That would be a lot of fun. But um, thank you so much. I so appreciate you coming down here and being in the studio with me today. I, I appreciate you asking me. It's, a, 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 it's, a, it's an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to Chillin' with Ice. And don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and share wherever you listen to your podcast. Remember to follow us on Patreon and YouTube at Chillin' With Ice. And on Instagram and TikTok, you can follow me at lori.ice.fetrick. I look forward to chilling with you next time here on Chillin' With Ice.